Hello, my name is William Graf. I'm a child neurologist and neurodevelopmental pediatrician with a special interest in embryology and prenatal neurodevelopment. Together with Drs. Bruce Cohen, Louisa Kalsner, Philip Pearl, Harvey Sarnat, and Leon Epstein, and with endorsement by the Ethics Committee of the Child Neurology Society, we recently published an invited review in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology entitled Fetal Anomaly Diagnosis and Termination of Pregnancy. The aim of this review was to discuss bioethical issues in prenatal diagnosis and healthcare, especially after the recent judicial and legislative decisions that affect reproductive rights in the United States. In this review, we acknowledge that the topic of abortion, for various reasons and perhaps under various circumstances, involves particular moralities that are not universal or shared by all cultures, groups, and individuals. We recognize that reasonable people who are committed to morality may view prenatal care differently. We also acknowledge that the moral status of the fetus and the concept of personhood are largely unsettled issues and generally represent socially polarizing disputes. We briefly review historical aspects of embryology and personhood. We consider many interconnected issues in prenatal diagnosis, including maternal, fetal, and infant morbidity and mortality, and parental options for prenatal diagnostic testing. We examine relevant ethical issues, including informed consent and shared decision-making, reproductive autonomy, the emergence of fetal consciousness and sentience, the fiduciary responsibilities of pregnant mothers, and the obligations of physicians caring for the maternal fetal dyad. The topic of abortion involves social, legal, and moral dilemmas with potential conflicts between the rights of women, the rights of an embryo or fetus, the right to liberty and reproductive autonomy, the right to privacy, and the right to health care, including the benefits of scientific progress and prenatal diagnostics and reproductive health. There are many biological realities of pregnancy. Reproduction is a basic form of biological function, yet infertility and pregnancy complications affect millions of people worldwide, and a remarkable number of pregnancies do not result in a live birth. Up to one-third of all embryos abort spontaneously in the first eight weeks of nat by natural selection. As many women defer having children into their 30s, biological factors are ever-increasing determinants of health and outcome for future populations. Medical care during pregnancy is essential. Such care includes screening for treatable medical problems that can affect both maternal and fetal health. The primary intent of prenatal screening is to improve outcomes for the mother and the future baby through the early detection of treatable conditions. In addition, there has been a paradigm shift in the prenatal screening and testing diagnosis over the last 50 years. A secondary goal of prenatal testing is to identify mostly non-treatable, life-limiting and serious life-altering fetal anomalies, including major fetal malformations, chromosomal abnormalities, and other genetic disorders. Prenatal screening and testing include fetal ultrasound and prenatal genetic testing. Non-invasive prenatal testing, or NIPT, detects aneuploidies with high sensitivity and specificity through cell-free fetal DNA from maternal plasma. Advances in genetic technologies are leading to higher expectations in clinical practice, such as the detection of conditions other than aneuploidies. Chromosomal microarray detects a broader array of clinically relevant copy number variants. Prenatal exome sequencing may facilitate the rapid diagnosis of monogenetic disorders in fetuses with unresolved malformations. In our review, we framed our discussion based on four assumptions, namely, number one, therapeutic termination of pregnancy is an ethically permissible option for some women whose fetus has a severe anomaly. Two, the diagnosis is made before viability. Number three, major CNS malformations cannot be reversed, and four, heritable genomic editing interventions are improbable options for the near future. The limitations and consequences of screening and testing for fetal anomalies and genetic disorders are greater than any other test in medical practice. 
pre-test consultation and informed consent must emphasize the gradations of diagnostic and prognostic uncertainty. Prospective parents need to understand that prenatal testing is not just a routine pregnancy test, and parents must consider the need for critical decision-making if results are abnormal. Many pregnant women who initially agree to prenatal testing will later decide against additional diagnostic testing, and many parents will choose to care for a child regardless of the severity of the anomaly and accompany their child to a natural death. Antinatal and perinatal palliative care programs focus on diagnostic information, family-centered communication, prognostication, shared decision-making, and pain and symptom management. Palliative care coordinates medical, psychological, spiritual, and social supports for life-limiting conditions in addition to traditional medical care services. The question of when a fetus can perceive pain and has, clinic, has clinical and ethical implications. Sentience requires consciousness and pain perception requires thalamocortical connections and cortical synapses. Consciousness should not be confused with simple spinal cord or brainstem reflexes. Our objective understanding of the fetal cortex is that it does not possess adequate synaptic circuitry to perceive pain until at least 24 weeks gestation. The understanding that the pre-viable fetus has not yet developed consciousness or the ability to perceive pain may be consoling to some parents. Pregnant women carrying fetuses with severe anomalies or genetic disorders are often faced with a decision regarding the continuation or termination of pregnancy. A decision most often depends on the severity of the diagnosis, the gestational age of the fetus, the legality of abortion, and the personal values of the mother and her partner. Pregnant mothers are faced with a decision based on their understanding of what is in the best interest of their future child. Mothers regularly seek counseling to better understand the details of the diagnosis and prognosis for life-limiting or severe life-altering conditions, as well as the projected range of developmental disabilities and the possibility of suffering. The medical profession subscribes to the code of ethics, primarily guiding clinicians for the best interests of their patient. In maternal and fetal medicine, the physician has legal and ethical obligations to offer accurate prenatal diagnoses to enable informed decision-making. The code of medical ethics includes respect for decisional privacy and the protection of information shared in confidence. In life-threatening emergent situations, physicians must provide appropriate care to the mother to the best of their ability. Reproductive autonomy is more challenging than personal autonomy. A pregnant mother must make choices for herself and for her fetus. Informed consent requires knowledge and understanding of medical circumstances that might affect the health of the mother as well as the well-being of a future person. Screening and testing for fetal health or rejecting such testing are a major part of reproductive autonomy without coercion. Arguments for and against therapeutic termination of pregnancy after fetal anomaly diagnoses have been extensively debated. As physicians, we consider this the most complex topic in clinical practice. It is difficult, even for the expert physician, to make clinical judgments about subtle fetal anomalies or genetic findings. Ethical decision-making requires careful contemplation of the risks and benefits of any action compared to the alternative of no action. As technologies are increasingly implemented for the screening of prenatal de developmental disorders, many legal and ethical dilemmas continue to evolve. The authors of this review support the perinatal palliative care principle of shared decision-making which includes a truly informed decision by the pregnant mother based on her personal beliefs and values. Therapeutic abortion is a personal decision that can only be made by the mother or parents. In promoting the ethical, legal, and social imperatives of reproductive autonomy, pregnant mothers need to be able to make the best possible informed choice in the changing world of technology-driven prenatal healthcare. Such choice should include the right to refuse prenatal testing, the informed choice not to know about certain genetic test results, 
and the parental right to make informed decisions about the best interests of their future child. Thank you for your interest in this discussion.